Welcome back to the Mookie Chilson channel and you are looking live at another cue card. This is an outline, a rundown of what we're going to talk about in the order in which we're going to discuss it. And this is an SGC grading reveal plus 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 exclamation point underline it all. And there is a lot to get to. It has been a while. There's lots to show you. Um, but we're going to start with a holy pair of pinhole penetrations, Batman. Um, then some friend mail uh, from the shoebox in Hawaii. Uh, we have a Stump Mangini request from Rick at Vintage Oddball Cards. Eddie's Cardboard Chaos wants to see five connected cards, and I'll show you those. Um, Iconic Al wants to see two cards that have the same image in his double take VR, which is very cool, and I'll show you that. Um, then we'll get to the grades, and it's a small submission, but uh, good stuff. And I will finish it all out with a little Mookie Minute that is titled, uh, Thank You, Jerry. Um, so we will get to that. But let's begin with a whole, well, before we get to the pinhole penetrations, Batman, I want to show you this. This is a wrapper of the 1966 Topps Batman uh, cards that were released <laughs> back in the day. I believe these are the Black Bat cards. And this is the wrapper that um, some little kid uh, opened up and kept and saved and somehow made its way to Dean's Cards, that <laughs> online seller that has the ridiculously uh, overpriced uh, baseball cards. This popped up on Dean's Cards for 10 bucks and I snatched it right up and put it in this little display. I'm a fan of these cards. I love this art, the classic Batman logo from the TV show, the Robin and, and Batman cartoons from the TV show. Just super cool, um, and this will go up in the world headquarters um, on the wall. Um, but let's go to the uh, pair of pinhole penetrations, uh, Batman. This is the card number one in that set. This is the Batman. I've gotten a few of these graded before. Um, it's a great card, um, and this one is phenomenal <laughs> in, my, in my view. It's got two pinholes, and they're actually thumbtack holes because you can see if you're uh, retinas aren't burnt out from the eclipse. The corona of a thumbtack, uh, see that crease at the top or the, 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 the indentation at the top? It's the same thing at the bottom. So two thumbtacks held this to the wall and when the kid wanted to get this card off the wall, he popped this thumbtack and bend the card up like this, leaving two big fat creases across Batman's chest right above and below the utility belt. But I love this card. <laughs> I love both the pinholes, one in Wayne Manor up top and one in the Batcave down below. And so this will go up on the Holy Grail Wall of Fame um, very quickly. Um, so let's go over to Shane Shoebox Legends who has sent me stuff before um, and has sent me some remainders here, some cards that he says, Mookie, these are the last few cards. Finally, they came in from ComC. Uh, forwarding them along accordingly, Shane of Shoebox Legend. So Shane, as we all know, is a great guy who is quite generous and sent me a bunch of cards earlier in a previous video that I will link to. Um, and he sent these cards, and they have that ComC uh, receipt in it, and it's topped with a 1987 Topps Jeff Sellers, <laughs> of course, one of those Red Sox that the Mets beat that Shane um, is doffing here. Oh, and they are buybacks, and we have a Lee Mazzilli buyback. This is a great call, Shane. You don't know why yet. Kevin McReynolds, Rediscover Tops. Ooh, Rafael Montero, who I saw pitch Future Stars at the Futures game at City Field. Rafael Montero started for the world, and Noah Syndergaard started for the U.S. at City Field. So two Mets prospects started against each other. And now I have a Rafael Montero Future Stars uh, 2015 Tops card, which is super cool. Ron Gardenhire, 86 Mets, great. Uh, oh, another <laughs> Kelvin Chapman. Oh my God, that is so great. These are like different colors. I think this is bronze. Danny Heap, a, a left fielder for those Metsies. This is a silver one. So cool. Oh, Ronnie Darling. You have no idea, Shane. That is so cool. This is going right into my Z folio that I started uh, because of you, Rick Aguilera. Another great Met 86. Oh, Ron Hodges. Look at that. Very cool. 
Bob Myrick, Jim Hickman, <laughs> Marty Barrett. This is the man that uh, Jesse Orozco struck out to win the World Series. And <laughs> Shane. Uh, starting and ending with those Red Sox. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. Well done, Shane. Okay, let's go out to Hawaii where we've got um, Dylan from Double D Vintage Baseball Cards doing another one of his whatnot sales. And this is the card that I got from him. This is a 1975 Topps Mini Keith Hernandez rookie uh, in addition to Phil Garner and a couple others. But Keith is the man we wanted here. No mustache, no problem. Um, I did not have this card. I got a great deal on it from 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 Dylan, and I'm super super psyched. And not only was I psyched to get this card in the mail, but Dylan <laughs> sent me something that I secretly wanted from him, and I was too shy to ask. Um, but he sent one anyway, and I couldn't believe it. This is a double D vintage baseball cards graded slab featuring Tom Terrific 1979 tops. Um, in an eight, Dylan is <laughs> giving out eights. That's pretty cool. Um, I love the ingenuity of the slab. I love the way Dylan is taking it and making it his own and reclaiming uh, the slab industry. And you can buzz the QR code on that if you want at home. I'll leave it up for a minute. One, two, three. Um, but Dylan, I'm blown away by this gift. Thank you so much. Um, it means the world to me, and it will really go in a place of prominence here at the Mookie Chilson World Headquarters. So thank you for that. And now it's time to try and stump Mangini. Rick from Vintage Oddball Cards wants us to show a card from a set that John Mangini does not have. Um, the set, not the card. Um, and so I'm going to show him a team set. I asked Rick if this was okay. He said, yes, go for it. And so here we go. And if John has this set, I might be a little sad because it's it's not really. This is a 1986 World Series Champs limited edition Jim and Dave's sports cards. Uh, J and D's bubble gumless cards printed in the USA. 29 cards, one checklist, first and only printing. Um, and wait until you see these cards. You ready, Mancini? You're going to love this. Unless you have this already, which I don't think you do. But here, just in case you do. <laughs> There's Keith Hernandez. Gary Carter. If you're getting Beavis and Butthead vibes from these cards, <laughs> look at Lenny Dykstra. Nails. Roger McDowell. Uh, I wouldn't say that the print work on this is um, mint. I wouldn't say the artwork on this is mint, um, but it is a complete set from Jim and Dave of the 1986 Mets. Now that looks a little Simpson-y for, for Daryl. Um, there's Dr. K, Lee Mazzilli. So I have, they're all here. All your favorites are here. Bobby O'Hina, <laughs> Rick Anderson, Kevin Elster. Should I keep going through them? There's my man, Mookie. Mookie is sort of wearing like, it looks like a little bit <laughs> of a beret. Um, but that's what they look like on the front. Here's what they look like on the back. I'll show you what Keith looks like on the back. Card number one. Look at the printing. goes right through. So, uh, I love this set. I bet no one else loves this set. <laughs> but I love it, and I have it. And I bet John does not have it. So, there we have it. Um, now let's move on to five connected cards. Um, Eddie from uh, Eddie's Cardboard Chaos has been around for five years. He is one of those people who has kept the light on for people like me um, and has been producing content for all these years. And I'm so glad that he's uh, still around and pumping out awesomeness. Um, and I'm thrilled to participate in this, um, in this challenge. Five connected cards. Um, and I'm going to show off these five and ask you to tell me why they're connected, okay? So here's Jerry Kuzman. You got a 1980 Neil Allen. You got a 1981 Juan Berenguer, Hubie Brooks, and Mookie Wilson. Focus on Hubie here. There's Lee Mazzilli, <laughs> Shane Shoebox Legends. There's two Lee Mazzillis in one episode. Here we go. And Charlie Williams. Now, why are these players all connected? All of these sort of random New York Mets players connected? Well, let me go through this one by one. Jerry Kuzman 
uh, was in New York Met until he was traded to the Twins for Jesse Orozco. Neil Allen was a New York Met until he was traded for Keith Hernandez. UB Brooks was a New York Met until he was traded for the kid Gary Carter. Lee Mazzilli was a New York Met, there he is in his early days as a Met, <laughs> until he was traded for Ron Darling. And then Lee came back to the Mets for uh, in the middle of 86. And Charlie Williams, this is the sort of the little bit of a remainder here, was a New York Met until he was traded for anybody, any guesses, 72. In 73, we had uh, Willie Mays. So Charlie Williams was traded for Willie Mays. Not an 86 Met, but the autograph <laughs> is number 86. So there you have it, um, my five connected cards for Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. So thank you, Eddie. Moving on to the Double Take VR for Iconic Al. Now, Iconic Al, I'm sure you're all subscribed to, is the proprietor of Iconic Baseball, currently at the very tail end of the Iconic Baseball Top 100 Countdown. Um, I do not miss an episode. It is one of the most uh, prolific and profound <laughs> countdowns you're ever going to see, and it is great. And when Iconic said he was going to do a VR before he got to number one, um, I knew I had to participate. Anything that extends the length of the countdown, I'm in favor of. And so Al wants to see two different cards from two different issues using the same image. And I knew as a Met fan, I could solve the puzzle very easily. I could take the easy way out and solve this puzzle. Um, you got your 1968 Topps Tom Seaver. There's the pin, this is my pinhole version um, using that um, with the rookie cup. You've got the 1969 version, which they reused again there uh, with your pinholes up there at the top. Um, now that's your double take. This is also a triple take. This is the transigram version of that card, also with pinholes. So these all came off the Holy Grail <laughs> Wall of Fame. But that would be the easy way out. I'm not going to take the easy way out, not for Al. I'm not even going to take the medium way out. And the medium way out would be to show the 1952 Topps uh, Monty Irvin card. Um, now this is just one of the most beautiful uh, portrait shots you'll ever see on a baseball card. It's dare I say, iconic in <laughs> how gorgeous it is. And such a, one of the great jewels of that 52 set. Um, and I'm so glad they reused this image because they didn't really do it justice on the 1951 Tops set, which was that game card in the uh, red back version. So there he is in monochrome and there he is in living painted color. Um, so I'm really glad they reused this image. That's a double take, but that is not the way I'm going to even go for Iconic Al. I'm going to take a card, a pair of cards that I bet uh, maybe none of, <laughs> none of you out there know or have seen. These are my double takes. This is Dwight, Doc Gooden, um, both images uh, from shot in the spring of 1984. You can tell from his number 64 on his jersey. Um, his number changed to number 16, which was just retired at City Field in Flushing. So um, my man Doc has his number in the rafters. Um, but these are two cards from two different issues um, from the All-Star Game in 1984 and 1985. In the All-Star Game program, they gave out, you could pull apart these little different rectangle cards and trade them with your friends, I guess. Um, and Dwight Gooden made both games, and whoever made both those uh, programs used the same image. And so there he is, Dwight Gooden, New York Mets, 1984 in San Francisco. Shout out to Dave Spinrad, the rated rabbi, and uh, the 85 game in Minnesota, um, which was another great one. So there you have it, Iconic Al. These are my double take cards for you. Um, and good luck with the rest of the countdown. I can't wait to see it. Now let's get to those grades, the reason you're all here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to start. There's only four of them, so this will go quick. This is a 1950 Bowman uh, Don Newcomb rookie. And speaking of beautiful cards, this is another one, those rosy cheeks they painted on there. Um, this, I thought, had a chance at a five on the outer edge and a three on the lower edge and it got 
a any guesses i got a four <laughs> right in the middle so i was happy with that this is my 1968 Topps Gil Hodges card um, that I actually bought the day that he made it into the Hall of Fame. I quick snatched this up. Um, it was such a clean card <laughs> with beautiful corners. I bought it raw and just put it in my collection and decided it looks so sharp I might send it in. And there it is on the back. And you can see those corners are there's a little touching down there, but not much. And so what do you think this one got? This one got a 7.5, so it is a 7.5 twin with my Tom Seaver 68 um, submission that I did last uh, time. And this is one of the cards that I picked up after my Roy Campanella disaster <laughs> at the Philly show. There's no real mystery on this one. These are hand-cut uh, Wheaties, 1952 Wheaties, the action image, which I love, and I love it, uh, the orange and blue, uh, because, of course, us Met fans stick together. This got a min size, which is fine. I just wanted it in that holder and matted like that because I'm going to put it on a shelf and display it. And then finally, um, this one. This was the 19... Uh, let me just adjust that a little bit. 1954 Bowman uh, Roy Campanella, which I just think is, again, just like the Monty Irvin card, a little less smiley, <laughs> a beautiful image. That stoic face, the beautiful background, the green, blue, white, it's just all so beautiful together. Um, this one on the back you can see has a little bit of a crease on the corner there. And so I didn't know what that would cost me in terms of numbers, but I wasn't really worried and it got a four and a half, which again is fine. This is a personal collection card and I will hold on to this Roy Campanella forever and ever. Amen. Um, and speaking of Roy Campanella, we're going to wind up this whole thing with a little Mookie Minute, and we're going to use Roy Campanella, another image of Roy Campanella, to get to this Mookie Minute. Where did it go? So there's Roy Campanella after his accident um, at Shea Stadium in 1968, uh, having a toss with another catcher, a catcher named Jerry Grody. Um, and Jerry Grody um, was an all-star for the Mets in 1968. He started in front of Johnny Bench. Um, he was not an offensive catcher. He was a defensive catcher, um, and he threw runners out. Labeled by Lou Brock, toughest catcher to steal against. <laughs> there it is, right there in black and white on the pages of this Mets yearbook. Um, Jerry Grody died uh, very recently at the age of 81, so he's one of those uh, 1969 world champion Mets um, that is leaving us uh, way too soon <laughs> for my purposes. Uh, they should all live forever as far as I'm concerned. And if you need to know anything about Jerry Grody, um, all you need to know is this picture. This is Jerry Grody holding Jerry Kuzman after the Mets won the World Series against the Orioles in 1969. The most improbable miracle, a literal miracle for these Mets um, to win that World Series. And Jerry Grody was the um, stud catcher for that team. Um, what a guy, what a, what a career, what a life. Um, he's actually also, and I don't have many baseball cards of Jerry Grody, but I do have this one. This is maybe the most iconic card Jerry Grody will ever be on. There he is, down from the pinhole wall of fame. Um, in Roberto Clemente's last card, so Jerry Grody, um, you can see the number 15 with Roberto. So there you have it, your Mookie Minute. Uh, thank you to Jerry Grody uh, for winning that championship and living a life well lived. And thank you all to watching this for watching this. And I bid you adieu. Thank you. <laughs>